Hey, welcome everyone, I'm Ajin Koku and today we'll be going through some uh, basic Lua introduction. I'm basically starting a new modding of Isaac series because, well, uh, um, the old series, the ones where Lightbringer and Yufu, or, or however his name is pronounced, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, are pretty outdated. They came out basically three years ago when Afterbirth Plus came out, and I was hesitating to make this series because yeah, Repentance is right around the corner, but this is still basic Lua introduction, so it, it should be good to go, I I assume, because it's not like Rep is going to change the way Lua works. So yeah, I have a big file right here. Uh, I'll be splitting this in two, because I have basic Lua introduction and basic modding of Isaac introduction. But it's gonna take me over... Yeah, over 40 minutes to explain everything. So I'll probably just go over this. I'm not too good at explaining things, but I guess I will do my best. Um, yeah. So we we'll, we will want to start with the basics, of course. Like, uh, what is the first thing you're gonna do when you start making a file? Well, if you can see over here, this is the first thing you do. You register a mod like uh, with this function, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is that you define a variable. Now, how do you define variables in Lua? Well, there's, there's a few ways, but here's, for example, the ways not to define variables. If you can see here, there's some languages I know for certain that um, register variables like this, like, like this. But Lua is not the case. In Lua, you need to define it like, you can't have spaces, you can't do like, this or like that. No, you need to have uh, a single whole world, world I mean, um, to define. So if you want to do it like this, you need to use an underscore every single time. You, you can't have spaces. You also can't um, have like this. You you need to first start with a number, with a number. I, I'm sorry. Start with a with a letter. Or you can start with a, an underscore. So if you do this, uh, that that works too. But yeah, you the main rules are you cannot ever start with a number. You cannot start with or well, you cannot use these things in general. I I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, you can't. You cannot use this, and you cannot use spaces. That, that are the main rules of defining variables. Now, another important aspect of defining variables is scoping. The scoping is basically um, the action of, well, maintaining your variables where you need them. Uh, there are several ways of defining variables. There are defining globals, where, yeah, if you see up here, you need to do like local variable, and that's how you register. But if you do like it says here, uh, instead of having this inside of your game, it will be like in the general global scope of the variables. Um, oh well, that's not good in most of the cases. Uh, I will explain that in detail um, shortly after. Now, local, uh, I already explained what locals are. Locals are, as their name implies, localized inside. I want to try to go some more slowly because. I know I'm going super fast, as I said I'm not too good at explaining, but I'm trying. Anyway, yeah, local variables. Locals, uh, the name implies, are localized inside your file or inside where you register them. So say, exa say for example, um, you have like a function. If you have this variable here, it will stay outside of the variable, however, if you, outside of the function I mean, however, you register a variable here. Uh, it will it will only run here. So if you do like this, it will error because the variable is contained inside of this function. If you try to access the variable from outside, it won't work. That's the same if you have this variable outside the function and you try to call it from a completely different file. So for example, if I have this variable here and I go to this other Lua, if I go like this will error because um, yeah it's not contained in here 
it's in this specific file. However, if it was a global, this global I can access from any other files. However, even if that sounds positive, it really isn't because it pollutes the global scope. And I will get into detail later. Uh, well, later. Um, I'm basically right there. Anyway. And you, there's also another way to define variables, but I will explain this later. Basically, using a table. Now, scoping. The scoping is interesting. As I said earlier, with the global variables, imagine um, this is your mod, and this is another person's mod. Okay, so this is super big. Whatever. But yeah, this, this is the main example. So if you wanna register a variable, if you localize it, it will get registered inside your mod. However, oh sorry. If you try to access this specific variable from here, you will not be able to do it outside of the mod because it's contained. You can't let this variable out of the mod. So if you try to call this from here, from this place, it will error because it can gather this variable. However, if you register the global variable, it will register outside of your mod. I need to learn how to do this, <laughs> sorry. If you register outside it, then anyone can access this function, this variable, I'm sorry, so you can use it here and you can use it here, but there's an issue with registering variables like this. Also an issue with local, but uh, let's wait, um, yeah, well, for local variables, you see here you have limited space, however the space is big, I, I just can't scale it properly, but if you do this a lot, You are going to eventually, eventually, can I, eventually run out of space, because, yeah, in order to avoid overloading the memory or whatever, I'm, I'm going over stuff I don't really know. I just know there is a limit. You don't want to use too many local variables because you will hit that cap, and anything you register afterwards will not work or either replace an old variable. So. You want to properly scope your variables, that's where the table comes in. Because tables, uh, you can't contain a single table um, inside a local variable. And if you do, you have almost unlimited space inside this specific table. And even if you run out of that space, uh, you can just create a second table. And that will allow you to have even more space to define variables. However, if you just go with locals, I mean, it's not really something you should worry about when making the small mods, because, for, for example, here, uh, I raise a, a few variables and it's fine. The, the cap is like over a hundred local variables, so you don't really need to worry about that. It's not that big of a deal, however, what it's a big of a deal, I know I'm saying however a lot, I'm sorry, is the global scope, because let's say you make your variable are global. It should be fine in theory, but what if another mod makes the variable global? Now that starts to get conflicting, especially if you have this variable here and the other mod says, okay, but what if I have the same variable name, but I name it as some a different thing, not false, uh, let's see a number. Now this, if you do a check inside your code to check if this variable is true or false, but the other mod overwrote it with a 1, then your code will error because it will try to compare a number as if it was a boolean. So you need to be very aware of when to use variables because the, the same will happen here if you say, um, or is it text? Okay, here. Let's imagine this other mod has also local variable equal 1. Well now, since both variables have the exact same name, when the mod tries to call variable the name variable, it will pick this one instead. 
instead of the localized version. So you need to be super careful when to use uh, variables. If you're going to use global variables, what I always recommend is using a table with a very specific name. What I usually go with is my mod name table and then I use this. Let me make a better example here in this other mod. For example, here I, I have this as a global because it's the name of my bot and I use it uh, elsewhere. But the main table, um, this, this is a table containing inside the global scope. Why do I do this? Because first I want this mod, uh, as I said earlier, if you do this, other mods can grab your variable or table and use it even if you register it here. So that means they can also alter this. So they can grab this and my controller stopped working. They can grab this and change its name, change its, its value I mean, and put it back here. So even though that sounds bad, it can be really good for mod compatibility. But as I said earlier, you need to be really careful and only do it if you know what you are doing. So in general, I would advise to never use lowballs unless you're doing a really big mod and you want people to be able to mess with it. For example, here I use this because um, you can see here I have classes, uh, a lot of variables registered inside of this table that I want other mods to be able to mess with. For example, here you can add stuff into the mod by just, yeah, into the table. So if I wanted to make another mod, for example, here I could just gather like the global table, my entry, and this would be compatible with the other mod. That that's the main reason why we use um global variables. If you are not going to uh, do compatibility, I I really advise to never use globals to avoid uh, messing with other mods on accident and also to avoid polluting the global scope because same with this, if, if you use too many local variables you will run out of space and same happens if you use too many global variables. It will eventually uh, pollute the space so much that it will um, it will overflow. Uh, well, that will cause issues, of course. So yeah, that's my long explanation. I can try to basically summarize it. In general, when you're doing an Isaac mod, I don't mean like coding for another game or anything. Mainly in Isaac, you, what you want to do is use local variables. If you use local variables, uh, you will prevent almost any errors with other mods uh, of course by your side other mods can mess uh, mess up and mess your mod up but that's on them not on you what you want to do is prevent being the one who messes up mods so just use either locals or localize table for example I, I use mod here because this is a variable I raised up here which is a mod table but yeah Avoid using globals unless you are aiming for compatibility. And if you do aim for compatibility, for compatibility, uh, be sure to name your table something unique. I, for example, name it like my mod, which is almost guaranteed to never um, collide with another. I don't have any other examples, but yeah, that's basically what you should do if you want to do a global. If you don't want to do a global, then don't, don't worry. I already got 15 minutes in and I, I've i just explained variables, but I'm sorry if I explain a lot very fast if you don't understand, uh, feel free to go back and rewatch and maybe I, I will be answering comments of course, if you, if you don't understand something feel free to comment on my video and I, and I will try to explain the best I can. But in general that's what you want to do when scoping variables, just avoid lo uh, globals and use locals, but also be wary of how you raise up local variables. I won't be going too much into detail, but for example here, 
You see, this variable is registered inside a function. Now, as I explained earlier, if you try to get a variable outside of function, it will error. So, if you just want to use that variable inside that specific function, then there's no real reason to have it registered outside here. Because you're just going to use it inside this specific function. So, in that case, why not just register here? Like I did. That's the main thing. Now we'll be going to state next. First is ah uh, sorry. First if the if statement. Uh, sorry logic. We'll be going to logic next. Uh, for logic, there's a few things. There's if statements. There's conditionals. There's loops and all that. First we'll be going into if statements. Here, um, there's a few ways to use if statements. You can use uh, there's three main ones. There's if, there's else if, and there's else. Now, these conditionals are pretty straightforward. If a condition is met, then run the code inside the block. Else if, which is if this condition is not met, then go to the next part. So, for example, here, if the variable is true, it will return here, but if the variable is false, will check here and will not pass, so it will instead go here because the condition was not met. So here it checks if the variable is false and then well, it does it runs code. That's main that's that's mainly how it works. Uh, for else well you can also use this. If variable basically detects if the variable exists. This uh, doesn't only work for is true or whatever. You will want to use this thing thanks right here it's a short version of this. For example, if you have here, this will just search if the variable exists if the variable is not nil. This line is basically this. So if you want to register a variable, you can use, for example, um, this. So here the variable doesn't exist, it's just defined here, but it doesn't have a value. So right here, this is just this. Now here it checks if the variable doesn't exist, so it, it assigns a value if it doesn't. This is not really important right now, it's just some niche stuff I wanted to explain before going on. Uh, but yeah, this is basically what this line means. If the variable is not new. Now if the variable is new or not false or whatever, because this also means it's not false, uh, it will go here. Now else. Else is basically what you want uh, to avoid making a if statement because it's the same as else if is the same as this. Uh, what you want to do to save performance is if you just have a single condition like a boolean uh, you want to do this, then you can just get rid of this entirely because you can only have the value of true or the value of false. So there's really no need to do this when you can just do this. Uh, hopefully that's clear uh, how to use conditionals. Um, if statements, I mean. For other conditionals, I named differently here, but uh, don't don't pay much attention to it. Now, for example, and. The end condition is just basically to concatenate two different if statements. This is basically the same as this. Uh, well, not the same. It's faster. Running two if statements is considerably slower than just running a single one with a concatenation. So basically, this checks if the variable is greater than zero and lesser or equal to ten, then run this code. Uh, there's also, I forgot to name this properly, there's also the OR statement. I think the volume of the game is too high, but whatever, I can uh, lower it down on the recording. So yeah, OR. Uh, OR is basically like another comparative. Um, OR is basically... this. 
So, as I said earlier, uh, running this concatenation is faster than running variables. Now, an important thing to note, uh, you can uh, use parentheses. So this will become a I'm this will become a single statement. So you can do this. If the variable is three or ten, then run it. And you can also use not uh, as a statement. I forgot to mention that. Not. This is perfect valid. Uh, also note you always want to use this inside the parentheses because otherwise it will carry on the negative value and it will maybe error or call issue just make sure to always put it in the parentheses hopefully it's uh, understandable uh, sadly this is not a stream so I can go back or, or a class or anything so <laughs> it's up to you to try and understand what I'm saying I'm sorry if it's confusing I was super confused when I started learning so it's, it's normal don't worry it's normal if you don't understand at first it's uh, kinda hard if you are just getting into Lua but yeah, as I said earlier, if you have any doubts or anything, the comment section is open and I will try to answer every comment I can. Uh, but yeah, this is basically what I was trying to go into. Uh, you can make singular statements like with the parentheses and there or and not statements. Not basically checks if the condition is negative, so and not variable equals 5 is the same as variable is not equal to 5. I won't go all over the arithmetic uh, whatever like plus, plus, minus, times, division, um, modulus, greater, uh, sorry, lower, greater, lower, equal, greater, or equal, equal, uh, not equal, I'm probably forgetting another one. Oh, uh, exponent. Yeah, those are basic syntax. Uh, I don't need to go over that. Now, okay, yeah, I know this is 20 minutes long. I'm sorry, there's still a lot to cover. So, yeah, I went over how to define variables, how to scope, and basic logic. We're here now. If you wanna take a break or something, Free. I'm going to continue the video. It's going to be a long video, so sorry about that. But Lua is not a a really um, fast thing to learn. Well, not Lua. Lua is one of the easy languages, yeah, but it's not an easy thing to learn if it's your first language, anyway. It's easier than learning, say, C++ as your first language, so that, that, that's for sure. So don't worry, you're going to get a hand of it eventually. Hopefully. <laughs> Um, but yeah, don't, don't feel pressure to keep going on the tutorial. If you want to take a break, here's a perfect moment to go eat something or relax your, your brain. If not, then we should continue. 20 minutes in already. So let's go over looping. So there are another type of... Are not arithmetic, I don't know the name for this. I'm sorry. So yeah. Um... For, while, repeat. I won't go over repeat because it's super niche and I never use it. But yeah. So here, for, the for loop, it basically. Um, I don't know what's a good way to explain it. Uh, imagine the for loop is like. If you. Wait, so this, and you go if variable equal zero, then variable equal variable plus one. No, if variable equals one, then and so on and so forth. But not exactly because this is way more efficient than doing that at first. So here basically just starts at zero. Like you define the starting point here. Uh, I don't know if you can do this. I don't think you can. You need to define a, an iterator and an endpoint. So, for example, here it starts at zero, then it goes goes as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This, for example, will run uh, ten times from one to ten. So, say you want to spawn a coin on the player's position, this will spawn ten coins at the player's position. 
Uh, it's really... I think it's pretty straightforward. It just loops the amount of times from this number, from the number 1, to the amount of times it puts here, so it runs from 1 to 10. Now there's another attribute to this loop. You can, pl you can put like uh, the amount of spaces it goes. So for example, say I put 5 here. It will run from 1 to 10 and take steps of 5. So here it will only spawn 2 coins. Because it starts at 1, then at 6, I think. And since it can go to 11, it just breaks. So it will just spawn 2 coins. Um, and yeah, the, uh, there's another type of loop. There's a. Uh, also, be wary, you need to do. I forgot to explain. You need to do uh, this for, do, and. Uh, it's happened to me a lot <laughs> that I go for, then, and. This will error, this is not how loops work. You need to do the do operator. Uh, I also forgot. No, there's. Yeah, number can be uh, a variable. You can also use. This is a variable. Uh, yeah, there's no, not really thing. You can also do this. And yeah, it takes variables. Um, oh, okay, it's uh, this is basically how how you can do it if you're working with a function and you need like, oh, I want to do something with the amount of of health the player has. You can do like this, uh, I will iterate once per hard the player has. So yeah, that's good to know. I, I think now for the while loop. While is um, interesting. It's not like for. It will sit loop where it will only loop until a condition is met. So for example here, if if the uh, variable the limit is greater than zero, for example, I erase here at ten. And it will loop this eventually. If I get rid of, of this line, it will loop indefinitely. It will um, cause a stack overflow because it will loop once and again and again and again and again until uh, the game says, uh, no, this is going to crash. If I don't stop it, then it stops. But it will lag hard. For example, like, well, no, I'm not in a run. But I can. I can't tell you what I mean. If I go, um, and I go here, is it gonna crash or just stack up below? Maybe it crashes. Wouldn't it be fun? Okay, I think doing it in the debug console uh, was a bad idea. But basically, this doesn't usually crash unless you you screw up big time. I think it's just a debug console thing. Uh, but yeah, this will just uh, stack overflow. It basically overflows the amount of operations you can do in a frame, and it stops to avoid the game from crashing, which I think doesn't happen here because it's paused or whatever, so the logic is not running. But yeah, that that's it. Is a while. Uh, here I'm doing a bad example because this is basically a for loop, but you can do like uh, while condition do and here like do a lot of stuff and in the end just or you can also uh, do what I do next here uh, you have breaks now breaks. As uh, you can imagine, break the loop. So if you say have whatever this number is, I think it's 99, no, 999 million. Uh, you of course don't want to run these many loops because it will uh, it will not stack overflow. It will try to run every single one of these because it's a limited number, but it will not be pretty. So I mean, in this case, you can just do this, right? Yeah, it's. But if you don't, if you say uh, you wanna do you wanna break the loop only at this specific place if a condition is met. Uh, you do this. If i is greater or equal than 100, break this loop. 
Now what will this that what this will do is if I is a hundred then it will just skip this. It won't it will stop at one hundred, it will not go to one hundred and one, one hundred and two, all the way up to this, it will just stop the loop to prevent it from running more. So I think that's the main thing about loops. Uh, hopefully I explained um, looping well. I'm sorry again if I'm not being sure, I'm trying to explain it the best I can with examples and whatever. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, in the, the next step, the next topic is indentation. It's not as crucial, but it's... If you want to be able to read your code, or let other people read your code, uh, you need to be able to indent, because say all of this code, but like this. Will you understand anything here? Do you understand literally anything that I that it's written here? Because I don't. I'm I'm getting a headache just by trying to read this. So indentation is really useful uh, because this is almost impossible to read. If you want to read this, you need to manually try to indent it. And yeah, that's not ideal. So just always indent your code. The uh, basic indentation uh, key is tab usually. But yeah, just indent your code. Make you make sure you have spaces. Also, this is done, but I don't. This doesn't count as indentation. I don't think. Well, leaving spaces between variables and statements and stuff, just to make the code more readable, it also helps. It's not necessary. Indentation is not necessary either. But yeah, it might increase your file weight. Uh, like here, it's that increases like a little bit if you indent. For example, let's um, say no, I didn't do anything because the file is too small. <laughs> but yeah, just make sure to indent your function, your function, your code, uh, to make it easier for the viewer to read. Now, if you want to take another break here, it's fine. We are going to do some exercise now. Um, because I want you, of course, to learn. Uh, you're probably learning already, you're understanding how some things work, if you're not, you're, I, I trust, you're going back and reading reading the code and listening to what I'm saying, trying to understand my examples and everything. And hopefully you should be ready for something like this. This is more advanced, but it still falls under the same category. Ignore uh, the functions and everything, just focus on what the code does. Uh, what the conditions are, how they work, how the code is organized, and I have three examples here. All of these three are flawed. They are poorly coded. Now, your activity here is to um, figure out why they are badly coded. Um, just analyze. Let's work one by one. Let me just work by one by one. First, this one. Uh, this code is flawed. It has an issue, uh, well, a few issues. Now, your job is to try and figure out those issues and on your own write the, the function properly or whatever, or just in your head say, oh, this is the issue, whatever. Now, uh, I will leave, leave you to, to figure out this. I will give you a few minutes or take them on, take whatever amount of time you need. Uh, pause the video. Uh, when you're certain, uh, you figure out what is wrong with this equation, with this function? Uh, on pause, uh, check if it's right. If if you give up, <laughs> just um, on pause a bit. You don't need to overstress yourself. It's just a little activity, just to reinforce knowledge. Uh, but yeah, uh, I believe it will be better if you try hard to understand. But yeah, uh, pause the video now. I will give you like 10 seconds, and I'll start to explain what is wrong with this function. We will be doing this for um, all three. Well, let's start with this one. Okay, so in 10 seconds I will start to explain. Uh, pause the video now and we'll try to figure out. Uh, 
Okay, so hopefully you already uh, pause the video and try to figure out what the code was, uh, what the flaw was, I mean. Uh, basically here, let me return this to normal zoom. <laughs> here there's a few issues. As I said earlier, this thing is a, a major flaw here. Not a major, a minor flaw, but a flaw nonetheless. Because as I said earlier, there's a specific condition that mimics this exact thing. And if you remember correctly, it's a condition and this basically makes it so you spare yourself an entire if statement. Now, there's another major glaring issue here, for example. You register this variable here, outside, which is not the taxiest of all. Uh, a taxi condition, a taxi variable would be get room entities. You will never want to use this function. But yeah, it's still not good to register this, because let's say it was 4, it will be fine, um, because it passes through, there's no problem, but this is this is 6, uh, condition, yeah, it's true, but the variable, variable is 5, it's not greater than 6, so this bit of code will never run, and henceforth, this variable here will be just a waste of memory, you will never use it, so what you want to do is take this variable here and register it over here uh, just to prevent uh, leaking memory for no real reason now those are the only issues I see here well of course you can argue you can spare yourself from raising this variable here and just call it here yes but that that's not an issue that's really up to personal preference I, I usually do this like like this yeah register it here but if you want to register as a local, it's, it's honestly fine. There's no issue. That that was not the problem with the function. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, uh, here is the solved version. Just so you can compare it. Now going to the second one, here it also has issues, hopefully it should be easier to know what the problem with this one is, now that you learn what the, the first one was. So again, I will not go into too many details, just uh, wait 10 seconds, pause the video, uh, pause the video, I will wait 10 seconds and, and explain it so from now. I think that's enough time. So here the issue should be also glaring. Um, I don't have a numpad. <laughs> well, maybe no. Oh, what did I even do? Well, that isn't good. <laughs> Okay, here the main issue is, um, yeah, it's literally the same as before. This if statement should be an and. And there's a lot of variables here that you are not using. For example, room. Are you using room? No, you're not. Get rid of it. Level. Are you using level? No. Get rid of it. Player. Are you using player? Yeah, you are. Data, are you using data? No, you are not. HP, are you using HP? No, you are not. And uh, yeah, now you only have what you really need for the function. You are not wasting memory defining any other attributes. So again, let's take this. Put a solve version here. Just to compare. I know these are kind of easy examples, but well, for me at least, but if you're starting, it's even if you find it easy, uh, there's people who will not find it easy, and even if they do, it's still good reinforcement for logic programming. I'm not gonna teach logic programming in this channel, that if you wanna learn, I'm just teaching some examples. If you really wanna learn logic programming, make sure to search online for 
for guys and whatever because it's honestly kind of hard to master uh, I've been programming I bring I've been coding uh, sorry I'm <clears throat> I've been coding for like three years so of course it's more natural to me but since you're beginning I highly recommend you look up tutorials and and just guides and read through the documentation and everything just to learn how logic programming works how priorities on coding and variables and scoping and all of that works now for the final test this one is also pretty easy again I won't go over details just uh, pause now I will give you 10 seconds and then unpause okay so starting from now Okay, that should be enough time. Here, the, the issue should be kind of easy, since uh, I well I didn't explain, it, but by reading you should realize that every single one of these statements is something different. So you can't you cannot just do uh, if variable is really equal and one. Uh, this wouldn't work because you are uh, gathering a specific code. You are running specific code. Of each one, so the solution is wrong. If you if you thought of it, hopefully you didn't. Uh, but yeah, here what you want to do is basically turn this into an else if. Turn it into an else if. Else if. Else if. Else if. And then finish with an else. And yeah, this it it it's not pretty, but I'm pretty sure it is the best way to do it. Unless you wanna make like a, a weird uh, setup that I won't explain because it's not worth it for just this simple thing. Uh, you should avoid doing this. For example, if you have like a hundred um, uh, conditions, you got like stuff like this. Uh, yeah, you should avoid that. But in this case, uh, it's the best way, I think. So here's the salt version, it doesn't even fit in the screen. <laughs> uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Now 40 minutes in, um, then after this you can take a break if you want. Uh, the tutorial is probably going to last for another 20 minutes. I know it's not a short tutorial, I cannot make it short. It's um, an introduction to Lua. It's yeah, it's, I think it's pretty complete <laughs> and the introduction and I'm trying to explain it as best as I can, as thorough as I can, so I am taking a lot of time, so again sorry if you are going for a... oh, I... sorry for that, <laughs> I, I, I messed up there. Again sorry if you were looking for a short tutorial, this is not it. Learning Lua is not something you can do in just 10 minutes. Uh, you need to learn how to sit down and be patient, because coding takes patience. <laughs> It's not something you will learn like two days. You need to spend time and first try to understand. If you're just reading and and watching without paying much attention, yeah, you're probably gonna watch. You're probably going to need to watch twice. So try to pay as much attention as you can. Go back if you need to. Uh, comment if you are if you have any doubts. Uh, well, we will continue into tables now. Another part of coding that is pretty important is tables. How to use tables. Now tables, um, there are two variable variants of tables. Well, there are more, but we're not going to meta tables now. Just normal tables. There are order tables and unordered tables. So we'll be going to uh, order tables is like use register variables. So here. Uh, it doesn't really need to be like one, two, three, four. You can be like this. Just enter a, a thing. And so this is basically what, what it is: is it's indexing a variable, a uh, value inside the table. If you don't add like anything here, uh, you're indexing a new value into the table, and it registers dynamically. So this table right here is literally the same as this uh, so 
yeah, for example, up here, entry 1 is the first entry here. Um, entry 2 is the second entry. Entry 3, entry, so, sorry, 3 is the third entry, and true is the fourth entry. And the indexes go like this, so on and so forth, as long as you don't do it manually. You can do this manually. This, this right here works, it's fine. As long as you don't go like um, zero, this will work, but will have issues if you want to save. Same with like minus one, and those work, but you should always avoid them unless you're doing specific stuff. If you just want to do a table, um, just do it like this. Now for unordered tables, here. Now you can ask, it's going like index one, index two, index three and index 4. So how is this on order? Well, the thing is, uh, order means it's going uh, like Lua registers tables dynamically. So here like the first index like this, the first, tw second, third, fourth. Here you're replacing 1 with index 1, which is a totally different thing. I, it's, it's not the same. This is a a specific index key which is not a number so since it's not a number it's all in order because it doesn't have a start nor, a, nor an end it's just a random entries same with this it, this one has numbers too but they are not ordered they are they are not like this uh, they're just scattered around without a really an order so if you start with 2 and 4 and 1 and 3, this works but it's not ordered, so uh, some iterations and things will error and cause issues, especially if you skip like 1, for example, there's no 3 here, you go 1, 2, 4 and 5, uh, it won't cause errors or anything, it's totally fine to do it like this if you want, there's no problem, the only problem is when you want to iterate to this table. Uh, when you want to iterate through an order table, you can use the iPers function. iPers basically uh, grabs the, the, the key and the value and iterates through every single one of these entries in order. So for example here, if I run this, uh, I think I can clearly demonstrate this here. Uh, since it's not localized. No, oh, yeah, it is localized. Right. Uh, whatever. I will edit that out. Okay, yeah, I cannot test it in game because I don't know how to go. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know how to code. I just have something, some things in my code that don't really work. And uh, that's fine. So, well, yeah, basically, this will print the key. Uh, what this will print will be uh, for this view it read through table two, table two, table one. It will be like one entry one, two entry two, three two four. Sorry, three three four. Three. Following what this is is doing, right? And yeah, yeah, uh, that's how it will work. It this uh, iterates in order. But you can also do this uh, using the hashtag or whatever. Um, it it gets the length of the table. Sorry, I I <laughs> um it gets the length of the table. So here for the k equals one uh, table. Uh, basically, this equals four because the table. Oh wait. This equals 4 because the table is 4 and 3 one. So yeah, this is basically similar. The only difference is that this doesn't get you the key, only the value. Now for pairs, I didn't remove this. For pairs, you can use pairs on order tables too. There's no problem. What, what will happen is it will output them in random um, 
uh, order. So, for example, here it might output them actually like this. Ah, actually like this, instead of like this. So, yeah, pairs. Uh, you see it on order tables if you want. There's no problem. But what is most used to usually is on order tables because you cannot use this setup for on order tables and you cannot use i pairs for on order tables. So if you wanna iterate through this table, you need to use pairs. You cannot use a normal for loop or i pairs. You need to use pairs. Even if it outputs the thing in a random order, this might um, output like this instead of what you would expect. Um, well, if this was table 4, of course. So yeah, it would output it in a random order. But it's good for unordered tables. Now for the last bit of this tutorial, Lua tutorial, there's some niche stuff I didn't cover, like when registering variables, you can register more than one variable at a time. I'm actually not sure if you can do like um, and actually also return um, this. I think you can, but this is basically the same as this. Uh, just in a single line. Now, another thing you can do is to register to do, to do a condition. Uh, what I usually do this for is, um, uh, how do I do this? If, um, say I have local variable 2 equal 10. If variable 2 is, is lesser or equal than, um, here bar 3 and Oh, wait. Uh, what this does is basically uh, this. Sorry, uh, I I am lost. <laughs> uh, bar three is Evelyn. Oh yeah, I'm dumb. I I'm sorry. I explained that one. What I usually do is this: if variable two is greater or equal than bar one and eleven or nine, then this is basically the same as return like variable three equal eleven if not bar one, which if you remember is the same as bar one equal false. Yeah, I need to explain it again. Then var3 equals 9. So what it basically does is um, it checks for var1. Var1 is a boolean. So if you believe this is true. Now imagine these are grouped together. So if the condition is true then the variable the value it chooses is 11. If the condition happens to not be true, if it's false, then it will pick 9. So in reality this is basically if var, if var 1, then var 3 equal 9, else var 3 equal 9. Sorry, I messed up here. 11, var 3 equal 9. Uh, this line is basically the same as this. Uh, hopefully it's understandable. Uh, it's not usually that well. It's it's faster than running this in my experience, but yeah, it's usually not that big of a deal if you can just use a if statement. I just 
it's something I use because it's comfortable for me. If it's not comfortable for you, you do not need to use it. If you are not okay with using it, it's fine. You can code whatever way you want. There's no correct well, yeah, there's no correct way of coding really, just an efficient way. Uh, of course, if you like, <laughs> if you do this, and yeah, it's probably a wrong way of coding. <laughs> but I mean personal preference. Uh, you want to go as efficient as you can, as comfortable as you can. If this doesn't make you comfortable working with this, you don't need to use it. You can use the if statement like usual. This is just what I do and what I wanted to share, but it's not something you need if you don't want to. And that's easily the entirety of this tutorial. Uh, I know, again, I'm sorry if I explain, if I explain, if I overextend it. I didn't intend for this to last almost an hour. I thought it would be like 20 minutes long, I will rush through it, but I, I decided against it. I decided to better explain uh, what we were working on with. And yeah. So hopefully this is clear now. We went over. We went over how to define variables, how to scope variables, uh, logic, like if statements. Uh, conditionals, looping, breaking loops, indentation, logic programming, we went over tables, and iterators, and well this niche stuff. Hopefully this should be good enough as an introduction to Lua modding. I won't explain XML modding because it's only way easier than Lua, I don't need to explain it. Um, Lightbringer already has good tutorials on XML modding. So, yeah, I'm not here to like, I want to steal views from this other uh, guy. No, Lightbring Lightbringer's um, tutorials still hold, hold up to date. Even if they are a bit outdated, if you want to learn XML, I highly recommend you go to this tutorial because I'm a real, I don't know <laughs> too much XML, I just copy over vanilla ones and edit them. But if you really, really want to know how to do XMLs, yeah, just watch Lightbringer's tutorials and you'll be fine. I won't explain those. I will just go over how to use them when we get to that. But not right now. Right now it's Lua specific modding. Uh, hopefully this introduction was good enough for you to learn the basic stuff. If it wasn't, then I'm sorry. I tried my best. <laughs> I'm sorry if it was enough. But you can always rewatch the tutorial and maybe use like 0 0.5 speed because I went too fast or something. Yeah, feel free to watch bits you don't understand. Uh, Try using this on your own and coding whatever you want. And yeah, um, uh, this was my bit. So we're starting to welcome new models into the community because, as I said, even though Lightbringer's tutorials still hold up, they are outdated not because he did anything wrong or anything, but because the API version he was using when he first did the tutorial was super. It's super old right now. There's way too many new things that you can do and way too many things that you should have done in the past that you should totally about avoid now. So I will I will try to improve upon few tutorials and also give my point of view, my my way of explaining things. My tutorials bear in mind will be probably way longer than his, so if you wanna run through a short tutorial, you can you can go watch his. If you wanna very detailed an updated tutorial you can go you can come and watch mine. Uh, it's up to you, you can watch both, you can watch none. <laughs> yeah. As I said I'm trying to steal any content or whatever. I'm just trying to improve improve upon what is already there. And uh, hopefully add new content. Uh stuff that isn't explained already in the community. I I can try to explain myself. But anyway I already extended way more than I needed to. We watch if you need it, comment if you have any any doubts or need any help. I will link uh, the Binding of Isaac official Discord in the description, uh, the Modding of Isaac or unofficial docs, which are way better than the official documentation. I will link that too. There's my Discord server. Now, I will not, I need to make this clear, I will not be answering modding questions in my server. My server is only for my specific projects. I will be answering questions in the official Isaac server, so if you join there. There are a lot of cool modders, including me, that will help you if you have any issues. But please do not join my Discord if you, only, if you will only join for doubts. 
you can do that in the Isaac Discord. Mine is only for my projects. So please make sure of, of not joining unless you want my projects or whatever. As I said, I will link the official Isaac Discord, of the documentation, and I will also link this cool app I have right here, which is an official in real time log viewer. Which, for example, I will just demonstrate it. Yeah, as you can see, the arrows pop there in real time. So it's pretty useful. I will link that to you. Those three things will be in the description. I will probably link them every single episode. So yeah, that's it for today. I will be recording this next tutorial next. This tutorial next, sorry. And yeah, hopefully it won't take as much. But I will try to explain it also thoroughly as I can. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, uh, make sure to comment, com comment, sorry, I'm no. <laughs> If you like and it was useful, make sure to like the video and just subscribe for future tutorials or content of mine, whatever. If you're interested in wacky mods, you can check my channel. I, I'm working a few cool mods myself, but if you just want to join for tutorials, it's fine, whatever. But yeah, hopefully it was more enjoying or supporting or anything. Uh, I hope this was useful to you, the viewer. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you have some of the ideas and bases for modding now. And yeah, that's it for today. Um, again, I'm overstanding. I finished the tutorial like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, I suck at doing outros. Yeah, whatever. See you in the next tutorial. Hopefully it was useful. Sorry for overextending. Whatever. Uh, till the next time.